What is cracking, you guys? This is the Art of Partnerships, episode three. I'm Mario Arroyo, agent extraordinaire. Right in front of me, we got Kevin Brady, real estate entrepreneur. And today I'm very happy to introduce our guest, Jesse Casada. Uh, Jesse is a real estate entrepreneur himself. And today we have him on to, uh, to describe and explain to us his partnership in elderly care homes. Um, Jesse and I, we partnered in two different ventures um, revolving around elderly care homes. And uh, let's let's start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jesse, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, you know, take the floor really quick and just let everyone know who you are, what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to, first of all, like thank you guys and thank Kevin for having me on here. You know, you guys did, have right done on. a great job so, thus far. You know, I've been watching. And <laughs> thank you. Fan. I've been a fan yeah. of Kevin for a while. and. <laughs> You guys did a great job. So um, my name is Jessica Sala. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I've been self-employed since I was 19. There we go. And um, I'm, I like to tell people I'm a, a high school graduate that that only passed for two reasons, because I played football and because my wife was uh, <laughs> in one of my classes. Nice, And uh, man. she uh, you know, helped me out a little bit on, with a go. grade or two. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I started my first uh, business when I was 19. Um, it was uh, daycare, which I still own. Um, uh, that's kind of a partnership with my mother that I have. Um, then from there, at 22, I opened up a, a barbershop, uh, got that going. And then uh, at 26, I started flipping houses. Um, Very nice. And that's kind of what led me into kind of the sister living um, okay. uh, for the elderly homes. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, very nice, man. I, I can relate to uh, a couple of those things right off the bat. Uh, number one is uh, <laughs> if I wouldn't have passed high school either if it wasn't for my uh, fiance now. And uh, <laughs> so I could definitely relate, man. <laughs> we Cheers to good women in our it's, life. Huh? It's, uh, I, I'm old enough now where I can yeah, say it and not get in trouble. Exactly. Yeah, I, I went to an all boys high school, so no, uh, no future fiance. <laughs> Uh, you, class, got, but, you got yeah. that too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, right on, man. And you know, I mean, one thing Kevin and I, I know we could relate to as well is that, um, man, you started entrepreneurship at 19 years old. Yes. Um, I commend you for that. I, I started my first business. Uh, I was a forklift salesman and became a uh, forklift, opened my own forklift shop mm-hmm. at 19 years old as well. Uh, you know, so I can, I mean, I applaud you for that, man. And, Appreciate you know, that. you definitely got the entrepreneurial spirit in you. And um, yeah. so what we're covering today is, you know, what you do now is uh, RCFE. Well, one of your businesses. I know you got a few businesses you're working on. and um, But today, I think we want to dive deep right into uh, what we're doing with RCFE, which stands for Residential Care Facility. For the elderly. Yep. For the yeah, elderly. Yeah, All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, Kevin, maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more on that, too. Yeah, sure. Well, let, let's start with some numbers here in terms of what we're looking at. Right on. Uh, these elderly care facilities are bringing in roughly uh, 38000 gross revenue a month. Correct. So we're looking at, okay. And the the facility, the way it runs is each bed is rented out to the residents. Correct. That, okay. Correct. Exactly. And with all those beds, let's say a, a three-bedroom home, um, you have two beds in each bedroom. So mm-hmm. each bed bringing in uh, what three thousand to thirty five hundred is that what we're looking yeah, at? Yeah, it just really depends on location. Um, okay. You know, our Garden Grove location is uh, you know it's not in the best area. Okay. Um, so our beds go anywhere from thirty two hundred to about forty five hundred there. Okay. Uh, Lake Forest, uh, our beds can go anywhere from about three, probably thirty two hundred to probably about five thousand um, dollars in that wow. area. It's, it's a better area. Okay. Um, and then uh, then you have place like La Habra Heights where okay. you know it's a higher end home um so you're you're looking at more of six six seven thousand dollars per per bed very very nice and yeah. if, if I can ask you a question I know you're saying uh you know pricing uh based off a of bed count correct um you know as a whole you know what what does that gross revenue look like as far as um what the whole house brings in correct it, it the, really the gross can go anywhere from 21 you know we have, we have one right now that does about 21 um to any kind of higher end home you're looking at 30 to thirty six thousand dollars per wow per home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for a three bedroom two bath correct you're and, saying in some cases and, and you know what we want to emphasize is these are regular residential single family homes that you right. can find yep Anywhere, just uh, correct. Right, wow. you don't need any special permit or anything like that. Is that right? That is a six bed. So it's when you go seven beds and above that you need to get permission from the okay. city. It's called a CUP, conditional use okay. permit. Okay. Um, if you are staying six beds and below, there's no permission other than making sure that you're ADA compliant, and then from there, um, you know, get licensed by the state. 
Mm-hmm. Very nice, man. A three bedroom, two bath, bringing in anywhere from twenty thousand to thirty. What was that? Thirty six. Thirty six. Depending on the bed count. Yeah. That that's <laughs> some that's something for our listeners to think about. There. Absolutely. I, I think people don't realize that you can buy that single family home, and instead of renting it out to just a regular family, correct. What if you rent it out to a a business like Jesse's? Correct. Right. right. Because correct. not all not all businesses RCFEs own the home no right uh, yeah, you yourself correct. jesse the the ones that you run do you own the homes or are you at least the first it? one that we bought um so initially when we got in, in it kind of involved in the business um we were flipping homes uh, my wife is an rn she's a nurse um mm-hmm. so she was she's been working for a hospice company the last i would say seven years okay um so she was going in and out of these homes to see her there they would be patients for her right uh, for us they're residents they're not patients it's a non-medical model um so she kept telling me you, you got it we got to look into this model we got to look into you know she because she she was going to some really nice ones and she went to some really bad ones and right. uh, the way you know she would tell me like we're the right type of people to do the right you know do it the right way um so when things really started slowing down for us on the flipping side um you know i started looking at it and and again coming from my background or you know coming from our background there's not very many people that are paying 35 four thousand five thousand yeah. dollars per per bed i mean i i thought it was crazy yeah, yeah. Uh, i but, think it's crazy still <laughs> yeah no but once i started doing the research and really started looking we went and look and toured a couple of them um it is true, and and the more and more from there, I really just dove into just um, where the where the area and the market is going. Um, you know, with baby boomers, there's ten thousand people turning turning sixty five every single day. So with that, not only are, do you have the, the the higher number that are turning elderly that are going to need this, right? People are living longer. They're living sicker. So so they're not be able to to stay at home yep. by themselves. They right. they need places like this yeah. so, um, so we got a combination of longer and sicker exactly, right. exactly. wow so yeah. so some, something to where i mean it's one thing to live longer and still be able to fend for 100%. yourself 100 but you're living longer and sicker you can't necessarily do everything that would entail someone taking care of your yourself correct so you obviously need you need that care and mm-hmm. that's where you guys step in 100 yeah. percent. yeah and we we say it all the time here the numbers don't lie Yep. And what Not Jesse just presented are the numbers. Yep. Um, these people are going to need somewhere to live. Correct. Um, okay, Jesse, what, what's the alternative? Like if what, let's say you, be, you get to 75 years old and, um, or let's just say my, my parents, let's say they were 75. I come home one day and they fell. Mm-hmm. And then I come home the week after and they fell again. Wow. I realize I have to put my mom or dad somewhere. Right. What alternatives do I have, or what what options do I have? Well, the the thing that goes with that is most likely they're going to end up in some kind of skilled or rehab. Um, the thing about that is you're only they only get so many days. So like like let's say my wife can answer more of this on the yeah, medical yeah. side, but I want to say it's like let's say a hundred days. Okay. So once your hundred days are out, it's literally like you got to go, and from mm-hmm. that point, either family or somebody is reaching out to a, a placement agency, right, or um, you know doing their own homework and, and finding homes like ours, um, and then the people that obviously that are. Um, they're ready to kind of go back into a more of an independent, not needing that much more care. They they go to the bigger facilities, the Brookdale's, the Sunrises, okay. uh, the big, the more of the big box facilities. Okay. Right. Um, but more of the people that need like longer term, uh, a lot of help, their higher needs are usually looking for uh, these type of homes because if they try to get one caregivers at home, mm-hmm. I mean you're, you're looking at. Yeah, say twenty five dollars an hour. If you need twenty four hour care, right? I mean, that right. that adds up really, really quick. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So people think that you know three thousand, thirty five hundred a month is steep. They don't realize how much it would cost if oh, it was twenty four sure. hour care in home. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. At twenty five yeah. bucks an hour. Yeah. Twenty five yeah. bucks. Yeah. An hour. yeah because you, you're not typically you're not gonna add you're you're not gonna um, you know hire somebody that's off the street. You're gonna hire right. some kind of oh, agency yeah, of because. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody calls out, you want somebody to be accountable to bring somebody else. You Absolutely. Know? So yeah. it, that's that's the thing. So that's kind of what you're paying that higher higher price for. Right. You know? and, and you know, you you mentioned something about the market. It's um, you know, the baby boomers are the ones that are mainly the 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 ones that are occupying these beds, right? right? And um, you know, it's something to where we're all going there. Yeah. You know, and I say uh, it all the time, man. Yeah, we're all going there. So <laughs> it's something to where it, it's something to think about that. I mean, obviously, we care for our people that are older than us. They're our mm-hmm. loved ones, our grandparents. Uh, sometimes, it, right now, our parents mm-hmm. and um, aunts, uncles. Obviously, the alternative going from um, instead of the 
the residential care facility. The alternative was going to like these big companies, right? Correct. So what is what is the what differentiates you guys besides it being in a home from these big companies? That's a great question. Um, really, the the biggest thing is being home based. Uh, right. You know, studies have shown that people live healthier and longer the longer they stay in their own home. Well, wow. they're, they're, I didn't know that. Becomes, <laughs> yeah, and then there becomes, yeah. but there becomes a time where they can no longer stay in their own home because it's, it's no longer safe. You know, right, there's right, falls right. or whatever right. may. Right. May, yeah. right. So from that point, what is the be- next best thing? Then is a home. Not it might not be your home, but it's somebody else's home. Right. Because now they're around other elderly. There's there's a social component out to it. It's not just you know them being at home with just a caregiver or exactly. you know themselves or a husband and wife that are just kind of elderly and trying to take care of each other. It's more now you're on, you're on a group and you know that you have staff there. You know they're, they're helping with medication management. They're helping with all those type of things that that are going to go along with with kind of the aging process. And I, I say that all the time. I mean we're all headed there. Absolutely. Um, and that's one of the one of the main things that we talk about in our team meetings is. Anything that we do, it's with our own parents involved. Like, would we be okay with this policy, procedure, system, whatever it may be, if our mom or dad was in in our own home? And that's that's what we always uh, yeah. we always do as a team. So that's yeah, great, absolutely, man. Yeah. That was a great answer to yeah, the question. That, that was perfect. And uh, and you like you know exactly you know it's inevitable. I mean, three things that are inevitable is you know taxes, time, and death. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. with that with that being said, um, yeah. this is a, this is something that you know I, I can see this. There, there being a marketplace for this, I mean, I don't see it changing. Absolutely, you know. No. Um, with, with that said, Jesse, let's let's uh, let's dive into the the ventures, the deals that that we partnered on yeah. here. Um, let's first start with let's start with Panchoy. Yep. Uh, Panchoy was the first project that that we partnered on. Correct. And it was it was huge, right? Yep. It was unlike anything else, yep. anything other that you had ever tackled before. <laughs> I'm talking about a uh, two million dollar home yep. on a hill, yep. best sunset you'll ever see. Yep. Let's rewind really bit, uh, yep. really quick here. Uh, Panchoy is that uh, the name of the the property? Is that on the street? Right. It, okay, it, okay. it has its own name now. It, it has oh, right it, it's, yeah. it's so that it's, big. So typically, yeah. we you know, uh, and for me especially, yeah. it came from the flip side of things. We would always name it by by the street name. So okay, right. Panchoy. Okay. That's that's what. That's what that's yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Let's clarify that right now. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that's how I name our flips. You know yeah. what I mean? We yeah, name yeah. them by the street name. So yeah, exactly. uh, I was just making sure it wasn't a business name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right on. Right. So so with that deal, it was like I mentioned, such a big deal that Correct. you pulled in multiple partners Correct. to help you um, with the financing of yep. it. Yep. Yep. Um, so that that. That's how Jesse and I met. We were introduced by our friend. I was introduced to Jesse by Giovanni, our mm-hmm. good friend. What's up, Giovanni? And, <laughs> shout out, doing? Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, then then you know I was I met Jesse. He told me about this plan to take down this big RCFE <laughs> on a hill that it was going to be a luxury RCFE. <laughs> right, right. It's like oh, you got to yeah. come check it out. Yeah. Went to La Habra Heights and there, I had never been to La Habra Heights in my I life. You, I, I still been, haven't. I don't been think there. you've been back. <laughs> Actually, you know, I have been there. Yeah, I, I haven't been back. I mean, no, you're like, uh, you're, no, that's that's not oh, true. Dude. You went to the wedding. The wedding. No, 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 I went no, to his no, wedding. No, there, wedding. We there we go. But, but I know exactly what you're talking about because we're flipping the property over here in uh, Hyde Park. <laughs> this guy's been there twice. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, you know, uh, like I said, I'm he a hasn't num- seen the finished product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. a numbers guy. So yeah. Send me the, the spreadsheets. Guy, yeah. That's all I need to know. Send yeah, me the yeah. the Google Maps thing, and I'll that's do a beautiful the thing, view. by the way. Yeah. Though I mean, not having an emotional tie to something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's perfect, man. Yeah. It's all no, about the numbers. It, yep. it, and with that said, even though I saw the property and I fell in love with what it looked like. Jesse showed the numbers. Right. Mm-hmm. He gave the facts of everything he just presented today. Correct. Um, and it made sense. Mm-hmm. It right. made sense. And I knew it was protected. I knew it was a good business model. Uh, and with that said, this was just an initial investment that eventually he uh, developed the property, Correct. renovated it yep. to uh, RCFE standards. Yep. And then uh, refinance and paid out his investors. And, and at the at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's all about the numbers, you know, yeah. completely, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, just just piggybacking off of that, it's you know, it doesn't it business is a big math equation, 
Mm-hmm. That's all it really is. Yeah. You know, is there a margin? Is there a spread? Is there a market? And at the end of the day, I mean, that's number one. You know, no, that's so. a great point. And, and, and then, like you said, as far as like not being having emotional ties to things, because it, right. it has to make sense. And as as much as my wife and I and our team have so much pride in every in, in the effort and everything that we put into our homes, it's still business. It still yep. has to make sense. Yep. Because in order for us to provide the care and provide jobs and provide these things absolutely there, there has to be some some kind of income coming in if there's not oh, yeah. then i mean it, it's it's you got to keep the lights on correct you know? yep. correct so one of the, one of the things that uh was on panchoy was you know it was it was definitely the biggest deal that i have done had done or still have done um not only from an rcfe residential residential care facility for the elderly but for even on my flip side oh wow um so it, it was <laughs> two and one that, here. yeah yeah so it was something that we did bring in multiple people um and uh you know to kind of give you an idea on the property it's we purchased it with um, the total square footage on it. It's like 6,000 and some change. Uh, it's a 10 bedroom, eight and a half baths. Hold on, hold on. 6,000 and some change for just the house? Yes. Just the house, not the lot. That's huge. That's dude. living I square I thought you were footage. talking about square no, footage no. of the lot. No, no, no. Wow, no, no, that's no. the house. Yeah, that's the house. Okay. <laughs> Imagine. Okay. Now you Carry know what on. we're talking yeah. about. That's why we call it Panchoy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it has a name on its own. Exactly. Just to give you guys an idea, a standard in LA County, a standard three bedroom, two bath is ranging anywhere from 1,100 to about 1,400 square feet. Yep. You know, so that's the sweet spot. So we're talking. Six times this? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a huge house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the 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 property sits on uh, two. What we purchased was two parcels. Okay. So the main parcel sits on five acres, and then there's another parcel that, w- that we purchased with six acres. Okay. So a total right of eleven on. acres. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that that sounds like a monster already. Yeah. So yeah. what did you what did you guys pick that one up at? Uh, we picked that one up at one point six fifty. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Right on. And um, you know, I I. I Still believe we got a steal for it. I mean, it, for what right. it was. Oh, it uh, sounds like it it. Had, eleven acres. It had great. It had great bones. Um, just way outdated. I mean, it had. I mean, you remember that? Yeah, you know, I remember the wallpaper. I mean, mm. it had, even had wallpaper on the ceilings. I mean, it was really, really bad. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, obviously coming from a flip background, um, I was able to see through that and you know see the potential that this thing could be. Yep. Um, and uh, it's a beauty. It's a thing of beauty now for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is that. Uh, would you say that's the one that's operating the best right now um no so that one right now we're we're we just got licensed so oh okay i see that one is a whole nother ball game as far as what we dealt with because remember we we talked about six beds um so mm-hmm. what we try to do initially uh, on this particular property was to get 12 beds right um because again because the house is so big i mean the smallest bedroom in this house is 250 square feet the biggest one is like almost 400 square feet that's huge so dude <laughs> these are humongous rooms yeah. so it just only made sense to put 12 there absolutely um, you know we got denied well we got approved by the by the planning commission then we got denied by by the by the city yeah you uh, mentioned so you mentioned cup right conditional One, use permit yep. okay and that's over seven beds seven beds and above seven correct. beds and above so yep. to go for 12 you got to go through that correct yeah. okay so I see. we got licensed about Mm, to about two months ago now and so now we're actively we got licenses six bed in the Very meantime nice. until, until we kind of go back to the city and say hey you know we we still think the higher bed count is what what matters i mean because at the end of the day that that area and that neighborhood is is an elderly neighborhood okay and it, it needs it's a great places market like this it needs places like very this. nice and, and what are you guys projecting um that one to bring in as a gross revenue so if we're going for let's say a, as a six bed, you know our beds we're going to be charging anywhere from eight to ten thousand there. Okay. Um, if we're looking at like let's say a shared bedroom, if we end up getting the CUP, uh, you know we'd be looking at about six thousand dollars a bed. Yep. Wow! Yeah. So this is luxury style yeah. RCFE. Right. Yeah. Eight yeah. to it's, ten thousand a bed. Yeah. That's if you have crazy, if man. you look at it from a real estate standpoint, mm-hmm. um, that you know people look at let's say rental properties. You have your A, B, C market. Mm-hmm. For us, our Garden Grove was probably like a C. Lake Forest is probably like a B plus. Okay. And uh, our La Habra Heights is, is like an A plus. I mean, nice. it's, it's really the highest. I mean, I, in my opinion, I would put that property up against any property in, in the nice. nation, man. I mean, as far as what, what it has. In the nation. What it brings. Uh, yeah. You know, like you said, I mean, on a clear day, there's there's views of Catalina Island, Long yeah. Beach. I yeah. mean, it's no un- way. I've really? seen those views. I've, I've seen the views. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and okay, so, so which one... Would would La Habra Heights be bringing in the most revenue for you right now? Correct, correct. Okay, yeah, cool. Right. And that's the one that's um, would you say closer to thirty, closer to 
No, it just depends. If it were if we're at a six bed, you're be you're gonna you're looking at more between fifty and sixty. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Fifty and sixty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they're still in the process of getting those residents. Correct. Sign me up, man. Uh, yeah. 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 Right? yeah. <laughs> no, and and again, it's at the end of the day, it's like anything else. I mean, yeah. there there's you know in real estate. Yeah. You're, they're, of course. When you move into a new market, there's there's a tough spot of really trying to figure out what, you know, what that market, what right. the buyer's like, what, what, you know, what, did, what are oh, yeah. say, the sellers, what they're mm -hmm. looking for, all that yeah. kind of thing. And, and exactly. that's, that right now we're in that, in the middle of that process of really trying to figure out, okay, on this higher market. And, you know, I tell you what, once we get, you get it figured out, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know? Absolutely. Right. And, and you know, one thing that people say a lot in real estate is that, Oh, you know, every transaction is the same, you know, <laughs> That is complete <laughs> bullshit, man, by the way. And I'll call it number one is because every marketplace is completely different. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. moving into an affluent marketplace. You're going to they're going to de have a lot more demands Correct. than the person that's, you know, purchasing a 100%. property around four hundred, five hundred thousand. Yeah. Right. You know, so I imagine that goes with anything, you know, that goes with I mean, definitely goes into residential care uh, facility because you mentioned eight to ten thousand dollars a bed for the one that you're working on. Panchoy, right? Correct. I mean that and, and, it's in a great it's in a great neighborhood. Let me let me, let me okay. tell you this because some people again at the end of the day they they're still like you know that's a lot of money, right? But you also got to look at the market that you're looking for the the, the clients and residents that you're right. looking for. These yeah, are people absolutely. that probably uh, live in the neighborhood, so yeah. they're they're multi million dollar right. homes. Um, one and then two that they have they probably have 24 hour caregivers at home right now. So absolutely. again, you, you go back point. to that idea of. 24-hour care, caregivers at $25 an hour, you're looking at fifteen, sixteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 a month. Yep. Right. So going to 8 to 10 is a discount. Yep. That's 10000 off. And they have a view now. I mean, maybe they don't have <laughs> yeah, that view exactly. where they're at. Yeah. No, not only that. I mean, they're they're probably mingling with other people that are in the That's in true. the facility yeah, as well. Exactly. That's and, a good point. you know, that gives you a sense of you're still talking to people. You know, Correct. you're not just by yourself at home watching yeah. the same shows every yeah. single day. Um I think that's good, man. And, and it's so, so win-win for both sides. The, the, the social part of it is so important. I, I mean, agree, we, man. We've seen, yep. we've seen it. You know, we've had residents come to our homes, and you know, they were they come from home, their their own home, where they they were by themselves, and right, yeah, they had a fall, so now they need to be in a home, and, right? Um, you know, the family says, you know, how much more alive they are, um, just being in, being interactive Absolutely, that they weren't man. before, and that's it wasn't great. it wasn't that's so great. much like as far as you know them not liking their son or daughter or whatever it no, may be, no. but <laughs> yeah. it was just on a daily basis. Yeah. They didn't, exactly. didn't have that interaction. You know? it, it, I mean, I used to live in Bellflower, and um, we had this uh, elderly gentleman living next door, retired gentleman, right? Um, I'd find myself in hour, two-hour conversations with this guy, and I noticed that this, I mean, the guy lived by himself. You know, he had no one to really talk yeah. to, man. Yeah, you yeah. know, so I think... And just for anyone, you know, I mean, nobody really likes to be a hermit crab and just, you know, stay to themselves yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. maybe a good portion of the time, but not all the time, Correct. you know. Right. And um, and I think that makes someone feel much more alive anyway, just having that human interaction with yeah. other people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's that's good for overall health in general. 100%. Yeah. So just to summarize that deal, it was a short term investment where I put up a certain amount of funds and was cashed out uh, after about six to seven months. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, not every deal is going to be like that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, with, with this deal, that was the plan from the beginning. Okay. Was put up some funds to acquire the property, Correct. do the renovations, then cash out all the investors. And obviously, it was a safe deal. We feel comfortable doing it right. because we had an asset protecting our, our investment. Correct. Very nice. Real, really quick, I got to ask a question, though. How did... So Giovanni plugged you with him, <laughs> right? Right, but so what? Let's let's go did, back on that story real quick. Did Giovanni right away say like, "Hey, my buddy has a business opportunity"? Uh, right, like, what well, happened? It was kind of like that because yeah. okay. at the time, I think Kevin was starting to look into this model. Ah, uh, that is true. And so I had, I think, I don't know if I had posted something or um, ran into Giovanni one mm -hmm. day and, and kind of told him what was going on, what we were doing. And he's like, "Hey, yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta get you plugged up with my, with my buddy Kevin." Right. Uh, at the time, I didn't know Kevin existed, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you know, once he, uh, once he got us in touch, um, that's kind of when we did the tow tour and okay. kind of gave him the vision of what, what, what the plan was. Right. Um, but. Like I said, every every deal is different. This one just so happened to be from the very beginning. It was structured very flip-ish as far as investors. Right, right, right. Uh, exactly. They were going to okay. come in, you know, put up funds, 
you know, and then get get a refi out out afterwards. You know, oh, okay. So, so you were refinancing the property once it was completed, Correct. right? Uh, so perfect. it was a cash out refinance yeah. to pay off everyone yeah. who had invested okay. in the property. Sweet deal for you, and also a sweet deal for you. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Correct. Not bad. Correct. But okay. at that time, you know, going back to the story, so when I had met Kevin, he was kind of like, you know, I, I've heard about this model. You know, I, I haven't met anybody that's doing it, but right. I'm interested in it. Right. And uh, he was actually the one that told me about the. Uh, the convention in yeah, Arizona. Yeah, right, right. We went to mm-hmm. convention. You went Arizona. with Sean, right? And I went with Sean, who yeah, was our yeah. prior guest in, in episode two. So yeah. so just really quick, Sean is the one that introduced this model to you first and foremost. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right. Um, so you went to the convention. Went to the convention. It was a convention solely on RCFEs, mm-hmm. right. residential care facilities for the elderly. And I invited Jesse. Yep. And... Um, I can't really say we would learned a ton. Yeah. Right. There were good connections that were made Correct. there. For sure. Yeah. I mean, nice. there's three people that I still talk to from that. They're still yeah. out, they're out here in LA, but they, they had gone to the same convention. But um, for us, I think it was more, um, I was interested in going because, you know, like I told him at the time we were, uh, we were already operating. We had two operating facilities. Right. And uh, we, when we first got started, we were looking for some kind of help, you know, right, right. anything, and we we couldn't find anything. I mean, we'd, we'd go to existing owners, and they kind of they sh- close the door in our face, yeah. you know. And then we would go outside of that, and, mm-hmm. and it's just nobody had answers. The only ones that had answers were the consultants that you know that were that we we I ended see. up hiring, but you know, yeah. at, at you know four or five hundred dollars, yeah, they uh, charge a premium three yeah. every, no every three yeah, hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's something yeah. where it, it just didn't make financial sense for okay. For, over a long haul. Right. Um, so we ended up going there, just kind of say, hey, you know what, let's see what we can pick up and all those types so of things. So you made some good connections. Yeah, That's for value. Sure. Yeah. For sure. So for it wasn't sure. a waste of time, man. No, no, no. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah. but it got us kind of talking a little bit more. That's at good. That time, we spent a little more time together. Right, right. Uh, we got to know Kevin. That's when I became a fan of him. And, and <laughs> Right uh, on, man. You know, at the end of the day, it, yeah. I like I love what you guys are doing, you know, and and I appreciate love, it, man. I, appreciate I've it. loved working with Kevin. Everything that I've done, um, done with him thus far, uh, which he, you know, we're probably gonna get into the the second deal. Yeah, well, that's very nice. <laughs> Let, let's jump into it. The second deal was uh was different than okay. the first deal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the uh, the huge project that Panchoy was. We didn't Jesse didn't need to bring in several different investors to Correct. take down this project. Uh, what had happened was uh, your neighbor. Um, yep. put his house up for sale. Correct. And Jesse reached out to me and he's like, hey, my neighbor just put his house up for sale. It's directly behind mine. Whittier property, right? Whittier property. Okay. Yep. I have visions of turning this into an RCFE and maybe eventually moving out of my house and making it a big, uh, bigger RCFE, stretching it out. Oh, so your house was that close. Was it oh, right next We store? shared the property line. So the, yeah. literally it's back to back. Yep. So your backyard was connecting to the house that was for sale back here. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. that is yeah. that is like yeah. talk about yeah. the universe doing something yeah. in your yeah. favor, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. almost like it was destined to happen. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Wow. Okay. So go on. So, so he, he reached out to me and he's and pretty much said, Hey, I need someone else to help me take down this property. I don't need uh, eight other investors, but right. how about you and I purchase this property together? And, right, right. And get in on the business together. Yep. So, so this business model or this investment was different. It wasn't me putting up money and expecting a certain return and then being cashed out. Mm-hmm. We were going to be owners on the property and uh, myself have a percent ownership in the business as well. Correct. Nice. Correct. Okay. Um, and so now we're, uh, Jesse's in the stages of renovating the property and I mean, and, I'll let you take it. Yeah. And, and really when, it, when all this started, um, me and my wife knew from the very beginning that in order for us to grow the way we wanted to expand, um, we needed to make sure that we had the right people in place. I mean, that's any business. You got to you you live and die by the people that you put in place because if, if they're not the right people, I mean, you're, you're going down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but to add to that, you know, the policy procedures, systems that we've created um, that we can really take anything from an existing RCFE to a brand new one started from scratch. Yep. Um, and so you, this one is that. You got a model and system that you're following that is duplicatable. 100%. That is the best way to scale. Yep. The best way to scale. 
So kind of give you a background on this one. It was, uh, like I said, a regular three-bedroom, two-bath house, um, 1,600 square feet. Okay. Uh, we're adding 672 square feet to the back of it. Very nice. And we're going to convert it into a seven-bedroom, three-bath house. Nice. Um, and get it licensed as a six-bed RCFE. Yep. So at that point, we don't have to deal with the city. There's nothing right. like that. Of course. Uh, we'll be ADA compliant. And it, this thing will be just as nice as Pan Choi. I mean, as far as wow. uh, aesthetics, because it, it's mm -hmm. it's gonna everything's gonna be brand new. And what was the purchase price on this one? We purchased this mm -hmm. one at five eighty five. Okay, right? yep. very nice, right. man. And uh, you know, I think uh, at the time it was valued at six thirty. I want to say six thirty. So the appraisal came in at six thirty, and that okay. that's pretty rare when you're doing traditional yeah. financial. <laughs> Absolutely. Usually, the the appraiser brings the value yeah. in at purchase price. They'll bring so. it at they'll bring it at whatever the contract says. That's where. They want to bring it exactly. So the exactly. fact that they appraised it at six thirty and it needed all these repairs, and right. you got it at five eighty five. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was all original. It's a slam it's dunk. Nineteen fifty built, yeah. and it's all original. Um, yeah. and then we're done with it with the add on. It's uh, we have an ARV at about eight forty. Mm -hmm. Oh, very okay. So, so what part of Whittier is this? That sounds like uh, it's, it's, it's right outside of Friendly Hills. Right outside of Friendly mm -hmm. Hills. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right on. I'm familiar with Friendly Hills. That's uh, it's a prime prime yeah. area to be in uh, oh, Whittier, yeah. man. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lacerna right around the corner. Yeah. yeah, very nice high school. So, oh, good stuff, man. Yeah. That sounds like a, it was a good deal for you guys. So when does that one go live? So we're, ex we're my goal is to have be licensed in the next six months. That would okay. be, that would be my goal. Is very to nice being licensed in the next six months. So you know if you're looking at where we're at, I mean probably by the, my goal would be by, by the end of the year. Okay, so that would be house number four for you guys. House number four. Yeah, okay, right. house number four. Man, not bad, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice stuff. So I mean, and we're talking about so La Habra. Let, let's just go through the list real quick. So let's start with Garden Grove. Mm -hmm. Garden Grove is how many bedrooms? How many baths? Garden Grove is five bedrooms, uh, two baths. Okay, and just give me a gross revenue. On that no, I'm one. sorry, I apologize. It's six bedrooms. Six bedrooms. Shared, yeah, we have shared bedroom there. So what we have there is we have four private bedrooms mm -hmm. um, for residents, and then we have one shared, and then okay. we have one that's that's using it as an office. Yeah. Right on. So so Garden Grove that that's bringing in. Let's talk profit. Let's talk profit. Profit's a little sexier than gross revenue, right? <laughs> All right. So, so how much profit is Garden Grove bringing in for you? Right so now? right now we have five residents there, and mm -hmm. we're bringing in about uh, close to seven, six and some change. Six and some um, change. So when we're let's call full, it six. That's a good yeah, day. When we're full, it can well over eight, eight thousand dollars net profit. There. Okay. And do you own that one? We own the business. We lease the property. Lease the property. So that Very was nice. the first one that we got, and uh, okay. I did that one in you know that was kind of structured the way I wanted to, where right. It was new. we were new to the business, so I, for me, I wanted to make sure that we were, we wanted to be in this business, right, right, right. To it. So okay. it would it would from the way my thought process was, it would have been a lot harder to get into it, figure out you know what this isn't the business for us. Right and now, I'm sitting on an asset that's really a specialty asset because yeah. no single family resident or, or yeah, family exactly. is going to be buying it. I, um, that's what I didn't want to get into. So we leased it, okay, and then. Um, the next one, once we got through that, that was a really, really tough time. I mean, my right, wife, right. My wife it, she, it was a tough one for my wife, but I, yeah. I, had, I had to deal with it when we got home. Um, she was more of the boots on the ground you right, know, right, right. In, in the, in the tr yeah. trenches. Yeah. Um, but we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Good, man. And that's that, kind of where... Again, that was number one, right? That was number one. The first one, you always learn yeah. the most, man. Yeah, and that, but and like I tell her, and we, we have great discussions about all the time, just how, again, that's a lot where a lot of our policy and procedures and systems and everything really came from. Right. Um, you know, if everything was, you know, all peaches and creams, you know, we might oh, not man. have mm -hmm. those systems in place. Right. And, and with that said, you know, anyone looking to get into... The RCFE business, mm -hmm. they don't need to be operators. No. This is something we want to emphasize to the viewers here. Right. Is if you buy a single family home and you take one more step and do the modifications necessary Correct. to make it RCFE compliant. Correct. You can lease the single family home for way more Correct. than you could have leased it to exactly. just a, a regular family. I'll give you, let's use Lake Forest, for example. Yeah. Um, Lake Forest uh, is an eight bedroom, three bath mm -hmm. house. Uh, we have six private rooms there, okay. um, and then uh, that would lease to a family, let's say, for about thirty-five, maybe thirty-six hundred. Yeah, Lake um, Forest, absolutely. But that area for an RCFE, you can easily get six thousand dollars a month. Isn't that okay. crazy? Or isn't absolutely, that crazy? man. It's almost double. Yeah. And and almost and, double. Uh, and what is your actual number on that one? 
So as far as what? As so far we, as profit. So okay, so we that's the first one that we purchase. So okay. we own the, the real estate and the business with that one. Doesn't um, get better so than that. So that one we're we're grossing twenty one and some change on that one, and we net on that one seven thousand um, dollars. We bought that nice. one with an upside. So okay. when we bought, when we purchased it, it was pre existing, right? And uh, we knew going into it that the previous owner was way below market rents on mm. everything she everything that she had going. Um, really, really a great lady. Um, right. She's we ended up hiring her. She works for us now. Nice. Um, but in the meantime, you know, there uh, we will be obviously raising up rents as as we go um yeah. one thing that we didn't want to do was right away get in and raise rents it's just not not that'll, that'll that's not scare our style people yeah nobody yeah. wants to be style. that guy it's not our style, gradual, you know no. um so it, it's been it's, it, it's been on a yearly basis now right um so there's there's definitely a, a, an upside to that one for sure very nice and so let's move to number three would be la habra heights yep and uh, la habra heights um let's go through that one real quick so you got how many beds again how much profit and uh, do you own the real estate or not? Well, it's in the process. So Correct. let's. It's in the process. Oh, of that one's in the it. process. Yeah, that yeah, one's in the right. process. Okay. Yep. I'm getting but, ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that that one we just got licensed. I um, remember as a I was six bed. Okay, yeah, I was asking uh, projections earlier. Right. Yeah. So Correct. okay, Correct. so and, and let's just let's just go through one more time. What are you projecting again as profit? Mm -hmm. And um and when are, when are you planning on actually going live with Let, that one too? Let's do it as a six bed. Mm -hmm. Well, projections would be, and then eventually as a 12 bed, once you get licensed. As, Correct. As right. A Correct. So as a six bed, we're looking at profit, net profit. We'll, we'll bring in about anywhere between 55 and 60,000. Um, net profit, you're, you're probably looking at anywhere from twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> net profit, <laughs> yeah, on that one. you kidding me, yeah. dude? It's yeah. a good number. It's, it's, it's great it's, numbers. The biggest thing that we've learned about this, yeah, is like anything else, it's it's supply and demand. I mean, at the end of the day, there's not enough of these homes, and right. then you take that for one, and then the second part of it, you know, it's doing it the right way that. Yeah you become something that people want. Right. Um, one thing that we've learned throughout this process is there's really no brands in this industry. Okay. Everything is mom and pop. I mean, we know people that own 15, 20 of these homes, but you go to each one and every single one is ran differently. That yeah. is so true. And I got to say that I never heard of this until this guy brought it up to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. didn't know this existed. Yeah, I didn't. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I really didn't know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of people watching didn't know this existed, mm -hmm. you know, but now we're talking, I mean, we're talking taking a regular style property and make seven thousand dollars a month on it right. man. i mean right. when your mortgage might be somewhere around three thousand correct yeah, and that's just it though you if you buy a single family home let's say you were looking to buy a home in california an investment yeah. property everyone says buy buy real estate buy real mm -hmm. estate yeah but then you you're looking at the numbers and you say well shoot my mortgage is going to be three thousand yeah i can only rent it out for twenty five hundred yeah. to a regular yeah. single family yeah. why would i do this well if you take that extra step there are other opportunities, Correct. such Correct. as leasing Absolutely. it out to a RCFE operator, Correct. Such, as, yeah, such as Jesse. So the other part of that is I, I you know, once I got um, through, started flipping, you know, so kind of let's back up a little bit. So mm -hmm. I bought my first property when I was 18. I bought a house, <laughs> I bought a house up in this Washington. This guy's done it all, man. And I bought a condo <laughs> down in La Habra nice. it, simultaneously when I was 18. We bought our Very second nice. one at 19. You say nice, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know the year, and you're not gonna say it was. It oh, wasn't nice. yeah, yeah. I, I know true, how man. old you are, so I'm doing the math in my you head know, right now. Yeah. yeah, if you're 18, you probably don't have a two year work history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you probably yeah. just you know, barely I, I, open uh, credit. And you so. know, the, the biggest thing was I, you know, was one of those kids. Obviously, that felt like I knew it all. And, yeah, you know, I told yeah. my we mom, all been you there. know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm yeah. why am I going to pay somebody else's rent? I'm going to do my own thing. And mm. you know, I bought in 2005, 2006. Oh, and, uh, okay. So that's we know what happened there. Mm -hmm. And right. you know, it, everything's a learning process. Absolutely. But throughout that process, I said, you know what? I'm never going to buy in California again. There's, there's just mm. there's no way to make money when it comes to. Uh, rental property. Yeah. Um, but as I started looking to this model, and people still question to this day, why are you buying in California? Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make sense. It's yeah. so high. This yeah. and that and the other. But I tell them, if the debt service is taken care of, why are you worried about what, you, how high you're going to purchase right. the property yeah. for? It doesn't matter if right. it's paying for itself. No, correct. It really doesn't right. matter. Correct. You know, at the end of the day, um, man, I, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about that because yeah. I get that all the time yeah. too. You know, there's so many people, and then I'm sure you get this all the time as well. Okay. So many people that, I mean, they're talking about, oh man, the mortgage is so high, this, this, and that. Yeah. I'd rather rent, but like, 
you're thinking outside the box, man. Correct. You know, Correct. and then at the end of the day, I mean, I, I remember one time I went to a seminar and this guy was saying that, um, you know, he goes, he was preaching seller financing, you know, and at the end of the day, it, it really doesn't matter what you buy the property at mm -hmm. if you're not paying the mortgage. Correct. Someone's Correct. paying it Correct. for you. Correct. You know what I mean? So, and then you're turning a property into a business and Correct. you're making money on top of that. You yep. know, some people are, are trying to get $500 cash flow yeah. on a rental. Yeah. You know, and then and we had Sean last last episode <laughs> making a thousand on a boat. You know, we got you yeah. making seven thousand on a regular three bed, two bath property. You know, it's funny you say it because I I thought it was I had I was talking to a um, she was a multi family uh, investor mm -hmm. and she said she was looking she's looking into this model and her thing and with her partner she's like if we make on a, let's say apartment building if we make two hundred dollars on a door per door like we're winning. Yeah, and I, I looked at. It, I'm like, especially in California. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, oh, yeah. I won't even waste my time for two hundred dollars. Yeah. Obviously, when you're talking Shit. about apartments, you're talking about times yeah. 155, exactly. whatever, whatever. Exactly. Whereas you're talking about bigger numbers, but it just for me, let's say a single family home that you yeah, know, we I know people right now that are making five hundred dollars on a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and just really quick in real estate. The one thing that real estate investors preach when you're buying and holding is do not buy a single family house. <laughs> like that is the last thing you buy right, when yeah, you're yeah, going to be yeah, real estate yeah, investing, yeah, man. Yeah. And I know it's kind of a spin on it because you're not necessarily, whoops, you're not necessarily doing real estate investing. Correct. However, I mean, it's you're making to it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it is a component it, because on some of these, you're owning the real estate. It, Correct. It's almost you know? commercial at this point. Exactly. You know, you're buying a residential home, yeah. but you're leasing it out to... Yeah. A business. Tell the banks that. Exactly. Yeah, tell the yeah. banks that, right? <laughs> hey, they better catch on yeah. to it, man. No, and, yeah. and, and that's, it is my opinion in the next five years, um, it's this is going to be something that the banks are knocking down doors. Once they Good. really, you know, it's this model is not new. It's been around mm. for over 30 years. Um, but it's new as far as the surface goes. Mm. A lot of these homes have right. been ran, you know, under the radar, just kind of go with the flow. Uh, but right now, it's it's something where I think over the next five years, banks are going to be looking at this model and say, look, this is a very, very secure model. Right. We, need to, we need to start loaning, loaning, doing some loans on these homes, you know. Yeah, it's but, good, right? you know, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, let me ask you, though, is that is that a good thing for you, for the banks to be able to finance it? Or is oh, 100%. It, yeah? Okay. 100%. You know, because the, the problem right now with some of it is is trying to figure out, uh, you know, when you're, if you look at Shiloh, Shiloh, we had no mm -hmm. issues because it's a regular home. Shiloh, the you know, Whittier house, right? Whittier the property. House, right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a regular property right now. Right. But let's say, let's say, you know, we have students right now that are buying, um, they're looking to buy existing. Let's right. say existing businesses is where it becomes a problem. Correct. It's mm -hmm. still a single family home. Correct. But right. a business is being run out of that home. So the banks see it differently. Correct. As mm -hmm. if it were vacant. Yes. Vacant I is see. fine. Someone could come in buy that FHA. Yeah, yeah. of course. All Claim, day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But not when there's already a business and you have residents in Correct. there. The Correct. bank wow. sees that differently. Yep. Very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I think uh, next couple of years, it's, it's, I think it's going to change. So I, I, would you say you're a little bit ahead of the curve right now with this business model? I don't know about ahead of the curve. Like I said, it's been around for a while. I know but you I said think, it's been happening a lot. For, for, as far as our, our being us, us being ahead of the curve, I think um, what we've come up with as far as the systems and be, uh, being able to just multiply wherever we, we want and what, yeah. we, what we can do, I think for sure. Yeah. Um, Great. Because, again, I think uh, the people that have been doing it for a long time, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, that have been doing it for 20 years, um, you know, like I said, everyone's ran differently. So right. it's not like they just set up shop whenever they want. Okay. Right now, if we had the funding, we can go anywhere. I mean, we can do anything that we want, um, and and put it or put our systems in play. You know, obviously, again, yeah, you know, that's one thing that we're all we're constantly doing. We're constantly recruiting, constantly right. you know, looking for new caregivers, constantly looking for staff, um, to, nice. so that so that we're ready and structured mm -hmm. when that new home comes up. We're ready to rock and roll. Right. And you could take this anywhere. It yeah. doesn't just have to be California. So, oh, no, so no. You do meetups and mm -hmm. you do classes revolving uh, around RCFEs. I mean, tell right. us a little bit more about that. Tell our viewers about that. Yeah. So we started the meetups back in November. Uh, we've had a meetup every month, and um, uh, except for December, obviously, the holidays. But uh, we took a break this month. Our next meetup would be in July. Okay. Um, the plan is right now uh, is to kind of 
the reason why we took a break was we wanted to add more value to what we were doing. Our goal is to be able to provide not just what we do and, and, and teach people how to start their own RCFE, but um, you know what we've been running into is let's say we have uh, and we have a hospice, let's say residents. Right. Okay. So we have bathing aids from hospice companies that come in and, and um, take care of our residents. And they've been really, they always come in that I've always wanted to start my RCFE, but I don't know right. where, how, what. Like, same questions we had when we got started. Yeah. Okay. Um, so 